How's everyone doing? Hope you all having a fantastic day and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. In this one, we're going to talk about how to make a Microsoft Flight Simulator a little bit more smoother and fix those stutters and also the best graphic settings that you can have. This is going to be a fairly long video because I'm going to go in pretty deep and try to find every single setting that is going to be suitable for you. Um, so if you do enjoy this video, because it did take a long time to create this and find all the information and research basically everything, um, I would appreciate if you like and subscribe. And also if you want to see some car videos on the top right um, corner, you can check out the latest video that I've created on the YouTube channel of Nonstop Driving. So make sure to check that out. So before we go into the simulator itself, um, let's change some things on Windows, which can prevent stutters, um, crashes and increase the FPS, as well as just having a smoother experience. So first of all, obviously, make sure your system is up to date with the latest Windows update so we're just gonna go um, on the bottom and we're gonna search for Windows update um, just like that and then you can check if there is one and for me there is one um, which is gonna be this one which is a pending download so I am gonna download that um, as soon as I finish this video just to get some more FPS in there um, the next thing that you might want to do is check out if you have the latest driver installed for your, G for your GPU because this is gonna help when it comes to um, actually making sure that that driver is suitable and optimized as much as it can be um, for your GPU. So um, one thing, if you have NVIDIA, you can just go into NVIDIA and then driver update or download and you can search for that and then driver downloads, you press on there and then you just select what driver uh, gra graphics card you have. For me, for instance, it's gonna be an NVIDIA RTX, um, actually on NVIDIA GeForce and then RTX, not on the notebook, but a 3000 series and then 3090 and then I just search and then I might get the latest driver for that and then install it just to make sure it's everything is up to date. Next thing, um, turning off your game mode. Go on the bottom again and search for game mode and then the settings. Make sure you turn this off because it's going to increase. Um, well, it's just, it's just not going to be very good for you because Windows is going to optimize your PC um, with their own settings to control how good your um, PC is basically running. But it's not going to optimize it very well. Another thing that you could do is go down to, to the graphics settings right there and then make sure this is also set off, the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, which reduces the latency and improved performance, but it doesn't actually really do that. It causes a lot of stutters and also some issues with Microsoft Flight Simulator, so make sure to turn that off as well. Next up, we're going to turn off the capture settings. Um, so go on the bottom again, type in captures and then in go into the capture settings. Definitely make sure that the background recording is set to off because what it does is it captures your previous place by recording your game in the background and this can go up to four hours. So if this is on, it's not going to be very nice because it's going to have some, um, obviously going to use some of your hardware to record what has happened and also stop um, with the recording audio. Just make sure this is turned off because it's going to obviously change a little bit of stuff when it comes to that. You could have also gone from the game mode straight to captures. You could have done that as well. The other thing that we're going to look at is your power mode. So go on the bottom again and type in um, power plan. So you can just type in that and then you can edit your power plan. Go in there. It's going to pop that up and then go into the change advanced power settings. In here, make sure this is set to high performance just so you have the most performance out of your computer instead of balanced or power safe. So make sure again to set this to high performance. And then again, press OK and you can close that up as well. Another thing, um, if you're, for instance, on Steam, make sure that Microsoft Flight Simulator is selected. Right click on it, go into Properties and then go down into the beta section and select the Sim Update 10 beta. Um, it might not be for the future because in the future you might not have the beta anymore, but you have the Sim Update 10. Um, but this is going to allow you to, for instance, to use DLSS and some other various performance increases. So for right now, make sure this is selected. Other than that, um, in the future, once it's not, um, just go back into the none and you have the latest update. But this is very important because it's going to give you a very big increase when it comes to performance. Um, I'm not too sure how to do it on the Microsoft Flight Simulator um, or the Microsoft Store, so you're going to have to rely on some comments in this comment section down below. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down there as well. Next up, we're going to move over to the NVIDIA control panel. So I can not speak for AMD. AMD, you're going to have to rely on the comment section down below, but you'll probably know how to find it. Um, for NVIDIA, right click on your desktop and then just open the NVIDIA control panel. And in here, we're going to go over to the Manage 3D settings page where you will be able to see um, basically what you see right here. So make sure it's on global settings, not the program settings, because that's just going to change it for one program. But we want it on the global settings to have access to all of the features in here. So the first thing you want to look for is the low latency mode. So let's go right down here and make sure this is set to on. What this does 
is it changes the latency con oh, let's go like that the latency control reduces the latency by limiting the number of frames the cpu can prepare before the frames are processed by the gpu so it's going to reduce the bottleneck situation in that case as well very uh, important setting make sure that is set to on and not on ultra or on off um, because on ultra i don't know if it says that um but yeah it just no it doesn't um but just leave it on, leave it on, on. that's going to be the best thing. Um, for the power management as well, we can put that down here and we can put that to the preferred maximum performance. Just so we have the, um, well, basically the computer's optimizing the management of the power, just like we said previously in the power plan, to make sure that the GPU, for instance, is also set to the maximum power, um, just so you get the more um, or the best out of the graphics card. Next up, we'll move over on to the preferred refresh rate. Um, make sure this is set to highest available and not application controlled. We will change that later on, um, but for this, it's just make sure it's on highest available, um, just so you have the highest um, available refresh rate. But we will change something here in a second in the um, adjusted desktop and the change resolution settings. Next up, we're going to go over to the texture, texture filtering quality settings. And in there, we're not going to go over to quality, but we're going to go on to highest performance because obviously we want the highest performance. Um, and that con basically controls the, um, well, you can read it down here. The setting allows you to simply decide if you would prefer performance, quality, or balance between the two. The NVIDIA control panel will make all of the appropriate texture filtering adjustment based on your preference. So definitely make sure this is on highest performance as well. Then we'll look at, oops, we'll look at the vertical sync. Set this to um, 3D application settings as well. That is just what you want to set it to. And then next up, we're going to go over to the change resolution tab right up here, and we're going to select the refresh rate. Now, this is this might be interesting. You might think, oh, okay, let's go with the highest refresh rate because that's obviously the best thing. But it doesn't really matter if you're in the simulator, you're never going to reach 144 FPS unless you basically have a NASA PC. So you might as well just change this down to a 60 hertz, which means there's 60 frames every single second um, going to produce or be produced by the monitor and basically be shown to you. That way, um, it is going to feel smoother when you're in the simulator. For instance, if you're running at 30 FPS, it's going to feel smoother when you have it on 60 hertz due to the fact that you obviously can't produce 144 her, um, FPS per, um, per a second. So that way it's going to just feel smoother because it's not going to have that big gap between the 144 hertz that you could see but the 30 FPS that you're only getting. So make sure this goes down to basically the closest you can get it to what FPS you have it in your simulator. If you only get 30 FPS and you have a monitor that provides you with 30 Hertz, definitely choose that. So let's put that down to 60 and then you just press apply and then change it up. And that is basically it. So let's do that. Let's change it down to 60 Hertz and then just press on yes. You can definitely see already, um, well you can't because YouTube obviously does it in 60 Hertz anyways. Um, but my mouse is not smooth now, um, as, as 106, uh, 144 hertz would be, for instance. That is basically it for um, outside of the simulator. So let's move on over into the simulator. So moving on over to the in-game settings. For right now, it might not look great, and we're sitting at a smooth 30 FPS. That is due to the fact that I've limited them at 30 FPS for right now. Um, but first of all, let's go into the settings itself. So let's go into the general options and let's take a look. First of all, make sure you're obviously on full screen. You might want to change your full screen resolution down to, for instance, 1920 by, um, by 1080 due to the fact that you're going to get a better FPS um, at that frame rate. Even if you have a 4K monitor, you might change it down to this just so you can have a smoother experience. If you have anti-aliasing um, or a card that is ready for DLSS, for instance, an RTX 30 um, series or 20 series, uh, make sure to select this and put it to, well, not ultra performance, but let's put it on to balance because that's going to give you the nicest resolution or quality and mixed with a good amount of balance for your graphics, uh, for your FPS usage, I mean. But if you don't have the capability of using DLSS, then otherwise put it to TLAA as it helps denoise ambient collision and reflection and other effects, and it's the best for that. Um, then we'll go down further on to VSync. You might want to turn this on, um, as we've previously said that um, the higher frame rate um, they have, or you try to get it as close to your monitor refresh rate as you possibly can. So what I've done is I've turned it on and I'm just going to put it at 100%, meaning I can go up to 60 FPS and that's going to give me the smoothest experience. If you have never reached over 30 FPS, 
put your monitor's refresh rate to 60 FPS or 60 Hertz and put this on to 50%. I'm gonna put it on to 100% um, just so I can get it close to those 60 FPS because I think I can reach 60 FPS here on this small airfield. Let's move down to the terrain level of detail. This will determine how detailed the surroundings will be and this will impact your CPU and GPU. I would recommend putting this down to 100 um, as anything over it will only slightly increase the quality but therefore massively um, decrease the FPS. So let's put that to 100 and there we go. I will apply everything once we're done. Um, for the terrain vector um, as well as the pre-caching, um, this basically controls the level of elevation, so mountains, hills, cliffs, and so on. And I, re I can recommend leaving this on ultra or high. I'm going to put it down to high just to get a little bit more smoother experience. Because every time you do choose something above it, you're obviously going to get a little bit of um, a couple of percentage decrease when it comes to your FPS. Um, moving on over to the buildings tab. Um, this settings basically will impact the buildings look like you might expect um, If you're running a high-end PC put this on to ultra and if you're running a low end PC put it to medium The higher the settings the more clutter and objects will appear as well as improve the shading on the buildings So low also has more barebone buildings in general um, So you could leave this on ultra or high depending on obviously your PC but medium if you have a pretty barebone computer Moving on over to the trees, um, I recommend leaving this on ultra because they just look the best. Um, it will also increase the draw distance and which you're able to see the trees. And the lower trees, like on the lower settings, they just look bad in my opinion with very high contrast and flat textures. Like you might see an X-plane with those flat textures. And the impact of the difference between them is pretty minor, but still there. Obviously, if you want to change it, you can change it to medium. But I think Ultra just looks the best and gives a pretty decent amount of performance as well. For the grass and the bushes, um, I would recommend this on medium or high. Um, density and render distance of the grass will change depending on the settings. Um, however, at low settings, there are just small blobs on of grass spots basically um, all over which just look pretty bad so I am gonna put this on high because I just think it looks the best um, but there is not too too much of a difference between medium and high um, if I don't forget I am going to show some pictures on screen where you can see the difference between them but that's basically it yeah um, for the object level of detail 100 is, I think, the best setting. This will give a massive decrease in FPS if you're suffering from a CPU bottleneck. Um, this setting basically controls the render distance of the LODs of various objects, such as traffic, cars, and planes. So let's put that down to 100, because otherwise it's just going to be extreme. Over 100, and if you have a bottleneck situation, it is insane. So if the main thread over here is just in the red constantly, that means you're bottlenecked by your um, CPU. Moving on over to the volumetric clouds. This mainly affects the way the cloud's resolution looks. Um, and I would recommend this on Ultra for high-end PCs and as they have massive FPS drop um, because volumetric clouds are just a very computer massive um, computing power which it requires but they just look stunning on Ultra. And if you have them on low they don't look that nice but you can still obviously use them. Um, and medium and obviously low for very low end users but i think medium is going to be the best option when you when it comes to that um i'm going to put them on high obviously you could use ultra um, actually let's change my ultra i just love them more for the texture resolutions i do say let's put those to ultra as well because it just makes it look more crisp without big fps loss so there's not much much difference in there for the anisotropic filtering um which basically removes some of the texture blur mishaps that happen um i recommend this on 16 um it's just going to be the best um otherwise it's not going to be the greatest for any mishaps you're going to just have a lot of um, spots around for instance your plane um for the texture super sampling i'd put that down to 4x4 because this is a very massive fps increase and decrease when it comes when if you're on i think 8x8 is the highest yeah 8x8 8 8x8 8 just has a very high fps drop compared to 4x4 so i'll leave that on there there's not much difference when it comes to the looks as well for the texture synthesis, I'd leave this on um, high as well. You can put it down to lower, um, depending on what kind of um, computer you obviously have. Moving on over to the water waves, I personally say um, put that onto medium for the optimal performance and quality looks. Um, you can obviously see the pictures, hopefully I don't forget, on screen right now um, of the difference between them. And I think medium and high don't have that big of a difference between them. For your shadow maps, um, well, your shadow maps, let's put them to 1536, which will give sharper shadows with good FPS, FPS balance. And for your terrain shadow, shadow, put it down to 512. 
this basically the higher the settings the higher the shadow sharpness and accuracy um, but 512 looks pretty decent in my opinion even though it's one of the lowest settings um, yeah so, yeah it's it's basically the middle ground um, but I, it gives you the best um, FPS and that as well for your can um, contact shadows this basically determines the trees and the grass um, which gets put into shadows um, and ultra is for the best quality but if you're on a lower NPC medium or high um, is what I'd recommend for your windshield effect put this on high as ultra gives a huge fps drop um, but also as adds some reflections to the windshield for instance of your monitor of the cockpit um, but definitely leave this on high because otherwise the raindrops on the windshields are on ultra are just going to give you a huge fps drop um, yeah for the ambient collision put this on high or medium depending on your system if you have a lower end put it to medium or low low i wouldn't recommend put it to medium and high if you have a high end pc for your reflections, um, put this down um, or up to um, where your um, ray march reflections, put this on to ultra or high and your cube map, cube map reflections, put this basically on the middle setting which is going to be 128 or 192, that's where I'd recommend it to be. For your light shafts, um, I would put these on, well, it, if you want your planes to basically have lights in the sh or show in the clouds, then ultra for your, um, to show them the best, um, is how it works as well. But if you don't want that, you can just turn them off and you're going to save a good amount of FPS because these actually have a pretty decent FPS drop. Um, but I do like them, so I'm going to leave them on ultra. Um, for bloom and stuff like that, you can leave them off, uh, leave them on if you want. Um, I personally am not a biggest fan of bloom, depth of field, and the motion blur. It just adds a little bit of extra, which I don't really need. Lens correction, for instance, I don't need that as well. And lens flare, you could add that. It's just going to show you the sun when you look at it. It's going to give that flare effect. Not that big, uh, in my opinion. I, I just leave them off to get some more FPS, and I don't think they look that great as well. For your glass cockpit refresh, definitely put this on medium. High is just insane. Um, don't do that. But on medium, it's perfect, perfect balance for that. That's basically it. So let's save that and just see what we have. For some, you might want to restart your simulator, like mine just did. So it crashed. Um, so that automatically restarts my simulator. Um, so let's load that up and see what FPS we have now. So as you can see, we're basically maxing out at 60 FPS and it looks very smooth due to the fact that we've obviously limited at 60 FPS as well as having 60 Hertz on there, which is very nice. Um, as you can see, it keeps on switching for limited by GPU and limited by GPU, uh, CPU. Um, or main thread, um, but this is basically the smoothest experience you're going to have when it comes to Flight Simulator in general. Um, it's just going to be very smooth if you obviously do it correctly with your monitor settings when it comes to the refresh rate and the settings as well. Hopefully this video did help you and remove some of your stutters and issues and found out for you what settings might be the best. Um, so if you did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. I would appreciate that very much and hopefully we'll, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye-bye.